Okay. Started the recording. Let's um, pray and start. Let's pray together. Let's start. Thank you. It's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for a new day. Thank you that we could get together and it's time to study, to learn, and open our hearts and minds to your word. We pray, Father, that by your spirit, you'll write these truths into our hearts deep so that we will walk in them, we will live by them, and that Jesus will be glorified in our lives. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Are you ready for memory verses or not? <laughs> you all ready? Everyone's ready? That's very good. That's very good. Online students, uh, you also, uh, you can participate. And All right. Who wants to tell me uh, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2? Romans 5, 1 and 2. Okay, I want to ask people, okay, who never shared uh, before. Please take the mic and uh, give me your name and then uh, please, Romans 5, verse 1 and 2. My name is Raju Sonar. And Sorry, what? Raju Sonar. Raju. Right. Yes. Okay, good, Raju. Go ahead. Romans 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, through, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have a peace with God through uh, Lord Jesus Christ, our yeah. Lord Jesus Christ, and through whom, uh, whom also we have uh, access, access by faith, by faith uh, access into this by faith, grace, into this grace, and which we stand, stand and rejoice and hope. In glory of God. Of the glory of God. Okay, good, good. Good. Thank you. All right, Romans 5.17. Okay. Oh, it's this. Say without seeing, okay? <laughs> sure, go ahead. Give me your name. My name is Hetrick Kemar. Hetrick. Hetrick. H-E-T-R-I-C-K. Hetrick. A-C-D. Hedrick. Okay, go ahead, Edric, please. You can sit down. Please sit down. Comfortable. Uh, Romans 5, 17. Yes. Uh, for if by the trespass of the one man that runs to that one man. Huh? Uh, Romans 5, 17. For if by the trespass of the one man that runs to that one man. For if by the trespass of the one man that runs to that one man. We who receive. Uh, one man. Sorry. Okay, who wants to help him? How much more will those Romans who receive? Romans 17. How much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of the righteousness rent in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Okay, okay. Um, I guess the version is different, but that's okay. Good, good. Please sit down. All right, Romans 5.17, who else wants to say? Can I? Uh, therefore, if uh, one man death reigned through the one man, how much more will those who, uh, who have received God's abundant provision of grace and gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Very good. Very good. Okay. Romans chapter 8, and uh, let's see, what was that verse? Romans 8.1. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Give me your name and please. Uh... My name is Akash. Akash? Yes. Akash. Akash. Go ahead. Romans 8 1. There, if any, there, if there is, therefore, if anyone. Now. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. All right. Good, good. Keep sorry. trying. No problem. There is, therefore, new no condonation to those. to those who are Jesus Christ. In Christ. Who, in Christ, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Very good. Good, good, very good. All right. 
let's try um, Second Corinthians five twenty one. Let's try somebody from this side. Second Corinthians, let's get the mic here. Second Corinthians five twenty one. Somebody from this, yeah. For uh, Kushbu, my name is Kushbu. For he uh, made him sin who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become his righteousness of God in him. Okay, good. Very good. All right, Ephesians 1, 3 and 4. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Okay, one more from uh, that. What's that person? Or just give me your name and then say it. And then we'll come this way. I am Nisi. 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 Okay. Ephesians chapter 1, 3 and 4. Yes, please. Blessed be, the blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly place in, in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. We should be holy without blame before him in love. Very good. Thank very good. good. All right. Daniel, Romans 3.22. Romans 3.22. All right, leave the mic on. Yes, please. Romans 3.22. Uh, even the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Uh, oh, to oh. all. To all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. Very good. Good. Very good. Good. All right. Uh, person at the back. Last. How about First Corinthians 1 verse 30? But of him you are in Christ Jesus. Uh, uh, give me your name, please. I'm Santosh. I'm Santosh. Santosh. Go ahead, Santosh. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who become wisdom of God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. Very good. Okay, good. Give all of you yourselves a good time. <laughs> okay, so keep this up, okay? Uh, uh, keep revising all these verses, and then we'll keep learning new verses. Okay? So keep revising. Don't forget. So, okay, it's over now. <laughs> Evaporate. Is, there is new, one more pastor that is remaining. New verses as well. All right. And uh, that is remaining. Time, uh, we'll ask those of you who are online to also participate. Uh, so that next next week, uh, we'll ask some of you online to also uh, memorize these verses and uh, share. So there's a question on the chat. We're using New King James Version. Yeah, we'd prefer. Um, uh, you know, if you can, and if you'd like to, you can use New King James Version, but if you're comfortable with something else, that's okay. Uh, but we'd recommend using New King James. Uh, Wangi, why, Wangi, your hand is raised. Do you have a question? Not a question, Pastor. I wanted to say a scripture. We can't hear you. Um, let me see now why we can't hear you. Uh, yeah. Wait, we can't hear you. What you're saying? Uh, can you hear me now? Uh, let's see. The sound is okay. Okay, uh, Juliana. If you want to type it in the chat, maybe that will help. Wang um, Wangi. Hope I'm saying your name correctly. I I was lifting up my hand to say a scripture. Um, I'm not sure why the audio is not coming through. All right. Sorry, Wonky. I'm not able, we're not able, able to. Oh, you want to say the verse? Oh. Okay, all right. All right, so let's fix the audio on our side. I'm not sure why we can't hear you. 
Uh, the students can hear you, but I'm not sure why the audio is not coming here. Try again. Mangi, try again. Let's see if we can hear you here in the class. Uh, try one more time. It's fine. Okay, never mind. All right. Next time we will do it. We'll fix that on our side. Okay. Um, thank you, everyone, for participating. Next week we'll have our online students also uh, give um, memory verses. Okay. All right. Now let's go forward with our lesson today. I'll just go ahead and. So we were talking about the fact that we have been justified and made righteous. And uh, I'll just quickly review that, and we will move forward from there. Let me share this. Check. Check. OK, online students. I'm not able to hear you, so if you have a question, please type it in the chat, at least for today, until we fix the problem. Uh, I'm not able to hear uh, what you're asking, OK? All right, let's quickly just review uh, section three. We are talking about being justified and made righteous. This is something we covered two weeks ago. Uh, page 33, section three, lesson number 22. So, in Christ, so we're talking about our life in Christ, we're talking about our identity in Christ, and how we have to live out of this identity, okay? And one, and we're, we're discovering different aspects of our identity, right? Who we are, what God has already done for us. So this is not something we're trying to achieve, uh, but this is something God has already done. This is who we are, and this is what we live out of, right? Um, lesson number 22, we are without blame before him in love. Uh, so we are holy and without blame before him in love. Lesson number 23, we are accepted in the beloved. That means God has already accepted us, right? So we are we, we're not trying to gain his acceptance. You are already accepted in Jesus, in the beloved. Uh, 24, we are washed, sanctified, justified. Washed means all the dirt is gone. Sanctified, he set you apart. That's our next section. We're going to study that. Sanctified. And we are justified. Justified means made righteous. This is what we are looking at in this section. We are without sin. We are clean in his eyes. Right? Just as if we never sinned before God. 25, lesson number 25, we are the righteousness of God. The same righteousness that God has, He has given it to us. Right? Because there's no other way we could come into His presence unless we have His righteousness. That is what enables us even to come into His presence to worship Him and to pray. He has given to us His righteousness. That is amazing to think about. That his righteousness is imparted to us. We are clothed with it, like Romans 3.22. It is to us and on us. You know, so we are the righteousness of God. And so we go before God with confidence and boldly. And so we see all those scriptures there. Number 26, we are justified and righteous through faith. That is all. Right? From our side, we just had faith in Jesus Christ. That was it. We have faith in Jesus, and God gives this to us as a gift in Christ. Lesson number 27, uh, we are justified and righteous freely by His grace. So it is because of His grace that He gave it to us. We, it's not because of our works. Of course, we have to walk in righteousness. We will talk about that, right? Next section. Of course, we live righteous, but... We live righteous because He has made us righteous. We are righteous, so we live righteously. Okay? 
and we are justified and made righteous by his blood because Jesus bore the punishment for our sins, right? So it's not like God is saying, yeah, you're a sinner, but I won't, I just overlook it. No, we are sinners, but the, there was a punishment for our sin. And that punishment went upon Jesus. There was a judgment for our sins. And our, that judgment went upon Jesus. So it's not like God is just arbitrarily saying, oh, I'll just overlook your sin. No. He's a just God. He has to judge sin. But that judgment went on Jesus. And that's why the blood of Jesus is so powerful. The blood of Jesus is saying the price has been paid. A life has been given. And so we can be forgiven. All right. So what does this mean? How do we live this out practically? Lesson number 29. We walk without any sense of condemnation. There's no condemnation. So as a believer, this is very important, the application. You don't, don't have to live under a sense of guilt, shame, and condemnation. You know, many people today, they have to go to the psychologist. They need to go for counseling. I'm not saying it's wrong to go for counseling. If you need counseling, please, you get it. But because they are under a, a cloud of guilt right? and they're feeling guilty but in Jesus you and I can be free from it right now like we were discussing I think two weeks ago in one sense feeling guilty is a good thing meaning the sense that you're convicted of the wrongdoing so that you don't go back and do it so that's a good thing but that should lead us to repentance. Say, God, I am sorry. And you don't stay in that place, right? You say, God, I am sorry. I know what I did was wrong. I am feeling the conviction of that. There's that guilt. I, I feel it. I'm sorry. What I did was wrong. It's not right. You accept it. You take responsibility. But then you don't live under that. You move to a place where there is a sense of righteousness. I am forgiven. It's over. It's gone. God has removed my sins, right? That's the place we're supposed to be living in. We're not to be living under guilt, shame, and condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Right? That's the place we live. And uh, so we looked at scriptures in line with that. So, number 30. The, second, the next application is, we have boldness to enter into God's presence. So when you and I go into God's presence, we go with boldness, we go with confidence, we go with assurance. We don't go with feeling of guilt, unworthiness, as though today God will just ignore me, as though today God will not answer my prayer no 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 that that is not let's put it like this that is wrong thinking the right way to think as a person who is in christ as a believer in christ is any day any time when i go before god i can go before him with boldness with confidence with assurance knowing that he's for me not against me you know yesterday or day before uh monday Today's Wednesday, yeah. So there's one young lady in church. Uh, she had gone to. She, she was not feeling well. She went to the hospital. So actually, she came from another church where she felt the pastor over there was condemning and controlling and all of that. So she couldn't stay survive in that environment. So she tried to move out, but the pastor was say, putting fear. If you leave this church, God will judge you. And this is happening in the city of Bangalore. <laughs> but this is the truth. I just, I just, if you leave this church, God will judge you. And uh, other people in the church were telling, if you leave this church, God will judge you. If you leave this. So, but and she, would be, she didn't, you know, she was feeling very judged and condemned, all these fearful things. So she was visiting here. And... Uh, 
she was not feeling well she went to the doctor the doctors were saying you know maybe this is cancer or something and um, so she was so scared and what did that pastor say pastor that pastor called her see i told you if you leave this church god will judge so that is why this sickness is coming on you other people in the church her friend see we told you if you leave this church god will judge you that is why this problem is coming to you and to the point where even her own family members were saying maybe god is you did something wrong god is judging so she was so much of i mean forget that on one side there is this medical report on the other side where she is supposed to receive help she is receiving so much of condemnation and guilt so she had message i call i said see don't listen to that kind of statements don't listen that is only causing fear that is only that is not the way god will speak right so I had to encourage her you had to believe god is on your side god is not against you god is for you you've not done something wrong you know just moving from one church to another doesn't mean you've gone against god we are all part of god's family right and uh, you know we are, yeah we may meet in different churches but we are all part of god's family so we are one we are one body in christ and god is not upset if you know i said i gave some so many examples and even for practical reasons people leave our church they may go to another church because if they move to another part of the city they will go to a church where that close to them that is okay not a problem we are not upset with that it happens all the time and so you know these are practical things so you know just to encourage encourage the next day report came you know and she still waiting for one more final report but this is as of yesterday actually nothing is wrong uh things are looking clear right and just was waiting for one more report and i'm sure that report will say also say there's nothing wrong everything is clear but think of the reaction the, the 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 fear that came in the way the people reacted and think about you know how we have to encourage that person you must know that in the worst of your situations god is for you not against you amen that's the confidence you must have in god because situations will always keep changing there'll be storms there'll be rain there'll be sunshine there'll be black clouds all those things will happen situation but in every season god is on your side amen and you have the boldness the confidence the assurance to go before god any season every season seasons will change the things we face in life will change they'll come and go like the weather but god is always for you right there must never be any doubt any question in good times and bad times god is for you he's with you and so you have going back to what we're saying here you have that confidence in god ephesians 2 this is on lesson number 30 uh, we know that we have access by one spirit to the father you know we don't judge our relationship with god based on these experiences right these experiences will change we are boldness with confidence through faith we go boldly to the throne of grace right and we talked about how you know we must keep our heart free from condemnation don't let your heart condemn you if there is sin confess it clear it but if your heart condemns us then you cannot have that confidence with god so we stop somewhere here uh lesson number 31 romans 5:17 we said this that adam sinned he brought us under sin satan and all those things but jesus came he obeyed god and through christ there is grace and the gift of righteousness and that means we will reign in life we will rule in life so ideally 
how must a believer respond? So take that same example again. So how would I how would I have loved to see that that young lady respond? The doctor say, you know, we think there is some problem. She should. So okay, doctor, you're doing it. You know, thank. You. Okay, take the report. Go back home and say, report. I speak to you. Sickness, disease. I speak to you. You are under my feet. I reign in life in Jesus. That means no fear. Because we have received abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. That's the way we should respond, right? That's when we know our identity in Christ, when we know who we are in Christ, this kind of report will not cause fear. Say, so no, I reign in life. God has placed me in a position of dominion over sickness, over disease. And I take authority over this. And I say, you have no place in my body. And I will not let fear come into my body. But sadly, this, this young lady was going through fear and all those things, which is, I mean, yeah, she, she's maybe she's not in that spiritually in that place in Christ yet. But that's the place you're supposed to be. You know, there will be these medical reports, all those things will happen. But we reign in life. We face it with confidence. So God is on our side. This sickness and disease is underneath our feet. Of course, you get the help you need, all of that. But you face it knowing that you rule and reign in life in Christ. That you will conquer. You will come out victorious. That's the way we have to live. I understand it. Right? And so our goal is to bring people to that place. Right? right Right. now they may not be there. We are all growing spiritually. It's okay. So we have to help each other. But we need to come to that place in Jesus where we will have, we will walk like that. And Jesus is our best example. Like when he faced the storm, he didn't say, oh, today we're all going to die. No. He stood up and said, peace, be still. He spoke to the storm. He spoke to the winds and the waves. Right? So that's our model. That's our example. We have to be like that. Okay? So we reign in life because of the gift of righteousness. Okay, number 32. Lesson number 32. Understand that righteousness is part of our armor. So lesson number 32, page 45. Are we all there? Yeah. That part of our armor is righteousness. So Ephesians 6, verse 14 says, Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now think about it. The breastplate is like this big metal piece that covers this part of your body. Very important because... You know, big easy target, right? If in those days they fight, they used to fight with spear and bow and arrow, and it's very easy target. This is like the main target. And if an arrow comes and pierces the heart, finished. But to protect, you have righteousness. Righteousness is your breastplate, it's covering a big part of your body. And you can think, if the enemy wants to shoot, they'll aim here, right? Because it's easy, big up target, right? Try to aim the head if you're from far, smaller space. But this is a big target, easy target. Aim here. But what protects us? Righteousness. So, look at it in spiritual terms. Spiritually, Satan's arrows are aimed here and our protection is righteousness the armor of righteousness the breastplate of righteousness you must be confident that you are the righteousness of god you must be confident that you are accepted in jesus there is no condemnation against you otherwise if you're not wearing that breastplate of righteousness easy target one little arrow. God doesn't love you. Full depression. God doesn't love me. One small arrow. God is angry with you. Full 
God is angry with me. So I say, brother, can you please pray? No, 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 I can't pray. Because in your mind, you feel God is angry with you. I'm not good for anything. You become easy target for the devil. But you have the breastplate of righteousness. I know I am the righteousness of God. God is not angry with me. I'm accepted in the beloved. I'm just as if I never sinned in his eyes. So the devil throws arrows of condemnation, arrow of accusation, arrow of guilt, arrow of shame, all those arrows. But you have the breastplate of righteousness. They can't fall. No effect on you. Because you have the breastplate. We're not saying arrows won't come. He'll keep firing. But you have the breastplate. It's protecting you. So every arrow the devil is shooting, no effect. I understand. So that's the difference between a believer who knows that in Christ they are righteous and a believer who doesn't know. Both believers. But one believer has the breastplate, so they're standing strong. The devil is shooting same arrows, no effect. Another believer, they don't know that they are the righteousness of God. Devil shoots one arrow. God is upset with you. God is angry with you. Oh, God is angry. Finish. They won't do anything. Sit down quietly. Depression, whatever, this, that, you know. I understand. Right? So having knowing our righteousness, it is the armor. It says yes, the armor of righteousness on the right hand, on the left, protects us on every side. So it's so important. This is a practical application. Last one, number 33. Lesson number 33 is that the righteousness uh, in, in the New Testament, page 46, righteousness uh, means three things. Righteousness means we are standing in right before God, in a right relationship with God, in a right standing with God. There is no condemnation. Everything is clear between God and us. Righteousness or the quality of being righteous means you are a righteous person. You will do what's right. And thirdly, uh, righteousness is is also the action. You're doing what is right. So one has to do with our standing before God, other, another has to do with our nature, our character, the third has to do with our behavior, our actions. And so righteousness includes all these things, right? God has given us His righteousness, we are in right standing with God, but that also should affect our character and our behavior. Right? We don't separate the two. We can't separate them, the, the, these three things. We can't say, well, I'm, I'm righteous in God's eyes, but I will be a bad person. I will say bad things and do bad things. No, a good tree brings good fruit. Right? So there is that consistency, both in our relationship with God and also in who we are and what we do. Everything is the righteousness of God. So, um, if we sin, 1 John 1, 7 through 9, if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, to have fellowship with God, we must walk in the light. But if we sin, it's not the end of everything, because the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. What must we do? We confess our sins, and He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay. So, let's memorize First John. Chapter 1, 7 through 9. Can you write it down, please? Question? Okay. 
Okay, yeah. You can use the mic as well so others can hear you online. Yeah, it's go ahead. Okay, just keep it pressed for a while, it'll come on. Light is on. All right, the other mic is there. Yeah, question? So, uh, as you said that to be in a God's righteousness, we have to in a good character, right? You have to be in a good character. So like we, godly it, it, it character. starts like this, right? It starts with God makes us righteous. Hmm. Therefore, we are the righteousness of God. That means we have good character. And therefore, we have good behavior. So it starts with what God does for us, as opposed to us doing this for ourselves, right? God makes us righteous. Therefore, we are righteous in our character and we are righteous in our behavior uh, okay so if it's like that then if some person commits a sin then what happens like what happens with that righteousness it is it stays in so their righteousness does not go away it's there but that sin breaks our fellowship with god so example, let's say you and I are friends. So again but in christ gift of righteousness is always okay. there it doesn't disappear it's there right any other question Renee? pastor no uh, we are the righteousness of god yes so and when god gives us this righteousness yes do we um, the the sin is taken away? Uh, is that so? The sin I am I was a sinner, but because God has given me righteousness, all my sins are washed away. Yes. I am pure now in God's sight. I am holy. Yes. In God's sight. Yes. But how is it possible that I am still able to sin? Mm. Or how is it possible that I I am sinning or I am making some mistakes. Yes. Okay. Is it because of, uh, we, as you said in the earlier classes, that our mind has to be renewed. So uh, after becoming the righteousness of God, and we are pure and we are holy in the sight of God, but God gives us the opportunity to, to renew our minds. Is that so? Yes. Yes. So once again, we go back to the understanding of the, the human person. We are spirit, soul, and body. Hmm? There are three parts to us: spirit, soul, body. Everything God has done is doing has done for us is in the spirit. In our spirit, we are in Christ. In our spirit, we have become, we have received the life in the nature of God. We become new creation in our spirit. Our spirit has received the life in the nature of God. Our spirit has received and has become the righteousness of God. Our spirit is spiritually one with Jesus. Right? First Corinthians 6.17. He was joined to the Lord, is spiritually one with Him. Spiritually, we have become one with Jesus. 
So the righteousness of God is upon us in our spirit. But we still have the soul, which is the mind, and the body, the flesh. So the mind is still carnal. Carnal means its desires are still evil. So the mind has to be renewed. The desires of the mind has to go from being carnal. We have to go from being carnally minded to becoming spiritually minded. That's the renewing of the mind. We have to go from minding the things of this world to minding the ways and thoughts of God. That's the renewing of the mind. So for a believer, if the mind is not renewed, they are still carnal. That means that they'll still want to do wrong things. Same thing with the flesh, the desires of the flesh. Still want to do wrong things. So this is where there are two things we, are, we have to do, which we will learn later on. We have to renew our minds and we have to crucify the flesh. Then what God has done for us in the spirit, we'll be able to put it on. People will be able to see it. You understand it, right? So that's why even though we've become the righteousness of God, there's a possibility of us saying and doing wrong things. Because the mind needs to, and it's a process, it doesn't happen overnight, right? The mind is slowly renewed, we get rid of all the wrong things. The body, we bring it under control in subjection to the spirit. And then we're able to, people are able to see Jesus in us. Okay? Let's see if any questions from our online students. Yes. Okay, if like there are many believers in church, right, who are in secular world, right, Pastor? Oh, one minute. Um, students are saying they can't hear me. Um, can you hear me now? I don't know why. Yes, we had just lost you for like okay. five or so minutes. So I'm, I'm not sure which question. Um, which question you were not able to hear. Okay. I'm not sure why. Okay, if somebody can type the question that uh, all of you did not hear, I can repeat the answer to that. Uh, first question, I'm not sure. Suppose we are a friend. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, so the question here was, uh, let me just answer the question. Um, so the question here was, uh, you know, what happens when we um, sin, right? So uh, the response that I gave was, it doesn't affect uh, our friendship with God. We, you know, we are... Uh, so, so it doesn't affect our standing of righteousness with God. We are still in Christ. Uh, we still have the gift of righteousness. But it affects a fellowship with God. Like 1 John 1, 7 says, right? If we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another, right? So our fellowship with God, our relationship with God is affected if we sin. So what must we do? We must immediately confess our sins, knowing that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. And we just walk in that gift of righteousness. So that's why when we sin, we have to acknowledge it, confess, and we know that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. All right? So this is based on 1 John 1, 7 to 9. So I hope that is clear. Question? Okay, after the break, you can ask. All right, any questions from all students? Okay, so after the break, we're going to get into the next, Vinay, your question. So as you were saying that uh, we have the breastplate of righteousness and it is the big part of, yes. or the target, a uh, big part to target. So is it that our huge part or our main part of our identity is that we are the righteousness of God? And that is where he, the, 
uh, Satan attacks. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a big part because if you turn with me to uh, you know Revelation 12, verse 9, I think it is, he is Satan. One of his uh, main jobs is to accuse us. Revelation 12. Um, sorry. Revelation verse number 10. Revelation 12, 10. Right? Uh, I, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. So think about what the devil's job is. Day and night. He's accusing, accusing, accusing. Yeah, come here. <laughs> full, uh, full time. Day and night. He's the accuser of the brethren. That's his job. Accusing, 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 accusing. You're good for nothing. You're useless. You're like this. You're like day and night. He's accusing. That's his full time busy. <laughs> accusing. So that's why I, you know, it's like a big part. You have to be right, strong in our righteousness. That's his job. That's what he's doing. And if uh, a believer is, as you said, as you gave an example of that sister, uh, who was struggling with fear? Yeah, her identity was um, attacked by the people yes. by saying God is judging you, and because of that, her fellowship with God also broke. Uh, not just I'm not I'm just using her example, but it might not be so in her life. But I'm just saying, like, if that righteousness is attacked, yes, uh, because of that, our fellowship with God is um, affected affected yes and that as you said the righteousness still stays but our fellowship with god is affected yes but if we repair the fellowship with god if we go to god and repent so then again get back to the same we thing, can enjoy that, that righteous, gift of righteousness. righteousness it's just that the fellowship with god is affected yes and that is where uh, satan Attacks. lies again and again and we are not able to go back to god yes and that is where a lot of christians are also struggling first yes okay uh, i think a nice verse to describe what you've said is in romans chapter 8 romans 8 14 through 16 romans 8 14 through 16 it says here for as many as are led by the spirit of god these are sons of god Verse 15, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So look at verse 15. You did not receive the spirit of bondage, slavery, to be in fear. That means, if you put it in simple English, God does not want us to behave like slaves who are fearful of their masters. But he wants us to behave like sons who call him Abba. That's how he wants us to behave. And verse 15, very simple. You did not receive the spirit of slavery again to be in fear. But you received the spirit of adoption by which we cry out Abba, Father. So instead of being fearful, oh, God is angry, I don't know what to do. No, no, behave like a child of God. Call Abba, Father. That's how he wants us to be. Yeah? So the devil wants us to keep, keep, wants to keep us in a place of fear. But God says, come and be like a son or daughter. Call me Abba, Father. That's what he said. Okay. So let's go for the break. We'll be back in 10 minutes and we will uh, continue this. Thank you.